Hello everyone. I am Kaustub Kakade, PMS Islampur, and we are discussing surgery today. And under surgery, we are doing uh, head and neck cancers, uh, the section of head and neck actually, under which we started with oral cancers. We studied about what are oral cancers, how they develop, what are the risk factors, what are the pre malignant conditions, how to recognize it. And now we are going to see how, how, we, are, uh, how we are going to manage a case of oral cancers. So let's go to management of oral cancers right now firstly you need to investigate a patient right you are going to investigate a patient first to confirm the diagnosis to stage the disease and finally then to treat right these are going to be the objectives so the investigation of choice is going to be edge biopsy i have already explained this in the earlier video that why you do an edge biopsy the simple reason is that suppose this is an ulcer in the oral cavity okay in the center you have this necrotic material so if you take a core biopsy like in other situations like if you have a breast cancer it the it is covered by the skin you cannot take out it easily so for what you do you do a you do a core needle biopsy but here no need because in the center you have the necrotic material whereas here you will have this proliferative cells right so it's very important that you pick up something from here from the edge to get a correct diagnosis to prevent any false negative results right then you are going to do a lymph for lymph nodes you are going to do a ultrasound guided FNSE fine needle aspiration cytology so why I am doing an ultrasound though I am having an ulcer because we don't know how deep this ulcer is right if it is far deep going into the floor of the mouth it will be difficult for us to stage the disease as well so for that what you will do you will take an ultrasound probe over here move that ultrasound probe here and there and with the help of that ultrasound you will take a needle and through that needle you will take some Set, uh, some specimen for histopathology and then finally for staging you are going to go to a very important phase that is your CT scan right now how to stage a disease see earlier we used to have only this sizes okay firstly we are doing a TNM staging T for tumor N for node and M for metastasis right for, uh, firstly, earlier we used to have only the size of the tumor considered, but as per the AGCC 8th edition, okay. As per the AGCC 8th edition, we have got that they have taken into consideration DOI. What is DOI? DOI is depth of invasion. You are considering how deep the lesion is, right? So please understand that in this staging, stage 1 is going to be less than 2 cm size and depth of invasion less than 5 mm. This depth of invasion, how will you get the depth of invasion? How will you get the depth of invasion? You will get this with the help of CT scan. Okay. Is there a role of MRI? Uh, that depends upon the case also depends upon the patient if you suspect it involving the soft tissue the bone the other soft tissues nerves and blood vessels then the mri will play a role as well right so in t1 you have less than 2 cm depth of invasion less than 5 mm in t2 just remember in t2 depth of invasion is going to remain 5 to 10 mm right so even if your size changes if the depth of invasion is between 5 to 10, this will always remain stage T2, right? Then T3 is if the size of tumor is more than 4 cm or please consider this or and then depth of invasion more than 10 mm. So either a size of more than 4 cm or the depth of invasion of more than 10 mm. This is going to be T3. Then remember T4 is in general going to be a local invasion, right? This is going to be, sorry, this is going to be a local invasion, right? Understand the difference between 4A and 4B. It's resectable and non-resectable. 
what do you mean by resectable resectable means you can resect you can remove out the tissue you can remove the pathological areas so what will be a resectable one which is involving just the floor of mouth which is just involving the alveolar processes just the mandible then that will be a resectable one but what is non resectable if it is involving nerves it is involving the base of skull the base of skull involves the nerves the important cranial nerves now now seven coming from the stylomastoid foramen you have the nerve 9 and you have number 10 you have number 11 you have number 12 so much cranial nerves coming from the skull base if anything uh, any of those nerves is involved you cannot operate it becomes quite difficult also you have the very important arteries and veins coming from there a very important artery internal carotid artery entering inside the skull so if it is reaching there can you cut the specimen you can you cut from that area no it's very difficult for you to cut it because if you try also a slight point mm of change of margin of cutting can lead to a voracious bleed so it's very important to understand what is a non resectable tumor and that comes under t4a or t4b then the nodal system n0 zero goes for zero so zero means no no lymph node one means same single so same side single lymph node of less than 3 cm n to a is ipsilateral single lymph node of of 3 to 6 cm to b is now to b or not to b everything is multiple so if you are having to b it just th- think multiple so multiple same sided lymph nodes of less than 6 cm and 2c is going to be a bilateral or a contralateral lymph node of less than 6 cm okay now n3a n3a is any lymph node which is more than 6 cm don't think whether it is ipsilateral or contralateral or bilateral everything more than 6 cm every lymph node more than 6 cm will come in n3a and if you are having a clinically overt extra nodal invasion that means you can get on palpation that it's a node but the node is quite irregular normally if there is metastasis also na the node should feel slow, sort of like a grape like should not be like a grape but like a seed which is a hard seed and regular but if there is extra nodal invasion it will be quite irregular and surroundingly adhered so that will come under n3 b right this is the most easy part i can tell you in the staging to understand zero means no metastasis yes there is a metastasis then m1 yes so in general to understand the stages please understand one go with one two go with two one for one so any t1 but with n0 and m0 okay only t1 will go with stage 1 only t2 will go with stage 2 and four four understand there are four possibilities in four just t4 any condition with n2 in it any condition with m3 in it and any condition with m1 goes with stage 4 so remember 1 is 1 so only t1 2 means 2 means only t2 4 has four situations t4 n2 n3 or m1 any of these if present in the staging and any other staging except for 1 2 and 4 goes in stage 3 means mixture of these will go to stage 3 right now what to decide how to decide what we need to treat how we need to treat the patient right so for that what you need to go to is going to be the treatment protocol stuff see i have already explained for you that it's quite tough for you to determine that um, when to shift the patient to the ot because of being a cancer surgery many things have to be done so you need to do a take a pre mal pre management care to the patient that is a routine investigation pre anesthetic checkup regular mouth wash i have explained this why stop smoking and alcohol very important thing to understand now what are the modalities of treatment available three important thing remember 
a small trick okay i'll teach you a trick to understand okay whenever a cancer this is a general principle of onco surgery remember whenever a cancer metastasizes via lymph nodes when the primary the prime method of metastasis for a cancer is lymph nodes there are three things to be considered right first thing is surgery and that has to be the primary mode then you have the lymph nodes because we know lymph nodes are the one through which it metastasizes and finally chemotherapy or radiotherapy now under this also understand squamous epithelium is resistant to chemo sensitivity it is chemo resistant so squamous cell cancer is more common in oral cavity and that's why chemotherapy has not much of a role though some areas they consider it to be uh, of good choice they give a new adjuvant chemotherapy as well but not a rec routinely recommended one so we go for radiotherapy more so there are going to be three things a surgery that is a wide excision lymphadenectomy that is lymphad means lymph node and ectomy means to cut and throw so lymphadenectomy means removal of lymph nodes which is neck dissection and finally radiotherapy so for wide excision what you are going to do now let's see what do you mean by wide excision okay suppose this is a tumor okay suppose this is a tumor and you have you are doing a wide excision so wide excision means about 1 to 2 cm from this you are going to excise all the tissues lying right like so within this margin we are going to remove along with this tumor associated with its depth of invasion as well this is a, just a 2d representation but everything is going to be 3d 4d everything coming in within 2 cm from this lesion has to be removed but what to do with the lip for the lip we are going to do a v excision or a w excision a v or a w excision so what do you mean by a v and w excision let me tell you suppose this is a lip okay here is the cancer this is coming from inside and involving the lip okay so now what you are going to do is you are going to cut through but it's not difficult because lip uh, this is going to be a cosmetically important area right so what we do we give a v shaped incision like this to the lower lip and cut it out and cut it out we are going to cut this through right this is wide excision lymphadenectomy mrnd type 3 that is called modified radical neck dissection type 3 we will do a special session on what are neck lymph nodes what are neck dissections but just to remember understand that modified radical neck dissection will involve removal of six levels of lymph nodes okay it will be removal of six levels of lymph nodes along uh, and uh, preserving what things are to be preserved okay what thing has to be preserved is remember you have sternocleidomastoid muscle internal jugular vein and the spinal accessory nerve please understand cis that is the preserved structures are sternocleidomastoid internal jugular vein and uh, your um, spinal accessory nerve now radiotherapy in which conditions we give radiotherapy that to that area just that four indications is a high grade lesion on histopathology it involves blood vessel so blood vessel invasion which is a non resectable one lymph node positive and those with positive margin positive margin means after doing a wide excision the borders of that specimen which we have sent to the histopathology should show negative margins the margins of that lesion should be negative but if it is found to be positive then you need to give a radiotherapy how to reconstruct this is not needed at the ug level but just to remember for a lip 
you go for primary healing if it is less than one third just suture that but if more than one third is involved we use something called as a baseliner flap for tongue and floor we go for radio radial forearm flap and if it's a mandible we preferably go for a fibular flap thanks a lot for uh, watching this video and uh, hope this discussion has helped to you to understand what and how to manage a case of oral cancer okay thank you